Um, hi everyone, and thank you for the introduction. Um, so yes, the paper I'm going to present today is called uh, Zuid's Building Blocks for uh, Swarm User Interfaces, and this is work uh, done with um, Lawrence Kim, Ali Parse, Jean-Daniel Fekat, Pierre Dragicevic, and Sean Former. The term of uh, programmable matter ap appeared in 1991 with Toffoli and uh, Margolus to refer to a collection of uh, fine-grained computing elements arranged in space. Two research fields uh, have been approaching this so far, robotics and HCI. Robotics researchers are focused on creating technologies to implement programmable matter, investigating how uh, to combine large numbers of um, robots to create reconf reconfigurable uh, modular systems. And in the meantime, researchers, uh, HCI researchers have concentrated on conceptual ways to interact and manipulate dynamic physical matter. Recent advances in robotics have allowed to create swarming platforms at centimeter, centimeter scale, coming closer to an ideal of programmable matter. But yet, no platform exists to investigate interaction with uh, programmable matter. We combine both approaches, actually, of robotics and HCI, and we propose to focus on 2D um, interaction on tabletops using many graspable interactive robots, and we present swarm user interfaces. Interfaces made of dynamic um, elements, interactive robots capable of handling both display and interaction. Swarm user interfaces are made of small, uh, many small robots that can be freely arranged and repositioned on any uh, horizontal surface, both through user manipulation and computer control. To implement Swarm user interfaces, we created Zoids, a hardware and software system composed of small robots with both uh, position and touch sensing capabilities. We demonstrate Swarm user interfaces in different applications such as here um, information visualization. Users can explore multivariate data sets and each robot embodies a data point and moves automatically to its position on the chart according to its value uh, in each dimension. Interacting with other types of representation is also possible, such as um, this line chart using a range, a range slider to explore um, the evolution of temperature in time. But Zoids can also be used uh, to create, um, to interact with the environment surrounding them, to create examples such as um, uh, reminders on notification systems, or even to actuate static objects. And as such, the main contributions of this work are a, work defini a working definition for Swarm user interfaces, a set of illustrating scenarios, gen uh, general design principles, and uh, challenges for Swarm user interfaces, and the first open source and uh, open hardware platform for tabletop sw Swarm user interfaces. So looking at the previous work carried out in tangible user interfaces, a recurrent limitation is the one-way mapping between the digi digital and physical objects. Changes in the digital world have no effect on the physical world, and thus creating um, inconsistencies between the two worlds. A number of, a number of systems have um, proposed to actuate tangibles to avoid this problem. For example, shape displays or user interfaces that support uh, discretized shape control of um, surfaces using arrays of mobile bars. Currently, many of these systems are grounded and bulky but uh, while they provide um, a precise, accurate motions, elements are constrained in a single di uh, dimension, losing the richness of uh, physically detached objects. A variety of systems have also um, explored how to actuate uh, tangible objects on tabletops. These were primarily, primarily based on direct manipulations of single or small groups of uh, tangibles, using external actuators such as arrays of um, electromagnets, in this case. Others have investigated techniques to augment tangibles with uh, locomotion cap capabilities, but yet these still rely on small numbers of interactive um, elements. In parallel, research uh, in robotics has sought to recreate natural swarming phenomena using large quantities of robots, using distributed computing, and, but however, these remain displays and do not support any kind of uh, user interaction. So building on this, we combined, both, uh, we combined both approaches to introduce Swarm UIs <coughs> by augmenting collections of independent self-propelled objects with uh, interaction capabilities. We created a complete fusion between input and output mod uh, modalities. Swarm user interfaces can be seen as coarse-grained um, 
uh, a coarse-grained version of the earlier futuristic visions of user interfaces based on programmable matter. Swarm user interfaces radically changed the way uh, we think user interfaces, not only from an end-user perspective, but also from an application designer perspective. Designers uh, designing Swarm user interfaces required thinking both in terms of things and in stuff. While things or physical entities um, exper experienced as individual objects, stuff consists of physical entities experienced as shape and material that can be reformed, uh, defined, or merged. <coughs> Typical tangible interfaces are located on the left of the continuum. They are made of things. In contrast, swarm user interfaces are on the right of the continuum. And as a low-resolution uh, swarm user interface implementation, Zoids stand in the gray area of the continuum and have both of the affordance of things and stuff. Swarm user interfaces elements can, be, uh, can behave as physical object, uh, physical pixels, sorry, to form uh, displays and it, we illustrate them here with Zoids. Using different colors, Zoids can encode information and or indicate different functions. Here, for example, the red uh, grass Zoid serves as the pen and the blue Zoids uh, form the shape drawn by the hand. But Zoids are also fully mobile, and uh, they can use the motion to convey information. Graphical um, display pixels are fixed on a static grid, and Zoids, on the other hand, can be posi uh, freely positioned in space. Elements can then uh, be combined into shapes, allowing for finer control than simply turning pixels on and off, and allow us to create various shapes by positioning each element in space. Zoids can, manipulate, can be manipulated in different ways to support rich interaction manipulation. A single Zoid can be manipulated at a time. With this example, um, each can be moved from one shard to another or placed in a ded dedicated area to obtain specific information. But manipulating one Zoid can also affect many of them. In this basic curve application, the red Zoids are control points and curvature handles, enabling for precise shaping of the spline represented by the blue zoids. Finally, entire groups can be manipulated at once using coarse manipulation such, such as um, uh, sweeping gestures. The flexibility provided by zoids also um, allows to alt alternate from one interaction method to another, and here starting with handles, the user can switch uh, to, directly, to direct manipulation using coarse gestures. So it's also um, enabled to uh, create well-known um, uh, interface primitives such as buttons and sliders. Zoids can operate on any flat surface in different physical environments. And as, as we've shown um, in the previous examples, Zoids can work on simple tables, but can also function in different environments such as on, for example, simple paper templates to bring static uh, contextual information but also on screens to support dynamic graphical feedback, or directly within the environment for more ubiquitous uses. This allows for new types of interaction by embedding the inter interface in the environment and physically interacting with it. So looking at the implementation of Zoids, each is a small wheel propelled robot embedding custom electronics, two motors, a battery, and providing power for about one to two hours depending on the usage. The custom electronics include an ARM microcontroller, multi-zone touch sensors, a radio communication module, two photodiodes, a motor controller, and a battery charger. Their lightweight, uh, coupled with two strong motors, actually enables fast movement approaching speeds of half a meter per second. The two photodiodes uh, capture the structured light projected by um, um, a DLP projector at 3,000 hertz. Each Zoid is then capable of decoding the two binary sequences to obtain its current position and orientation at a rate of about 70 hertz, with a precision close to a millimeter. Compared to a camera tracking system, this technique allows, us, um, allows each robot to know its own position in real time without relying on a third-party system, and la latency being a key aspect in closed-loop control uh, for robotic systems. This allows us to control robots more stably. Using our API, an application designer can easily develop new applications using uh, Zoids. The desired goal, final orientation, and colors can be set in the, in the application. These are then passed over 
to the simulator, which computes the path, the path to follow, and finally sends them to the Zoids using radio interface dongle. In parallel, the Zoids are sending their position, orientation, and manipulation status to the computer using um, the uh, to the computer. Sorry, to update the host application. We developed um, this tool to uh, couple with our API to manage the low level aspects of the platform, such as communication and path learning, to let designers focus on their uh, interactive applications. Our simulator uses the Snappy and colleagues HRVO collision avoidance library to, communi to communicate trajectories to the um, Zoids directly. Optimizing goal assignment um, using the Hungarian algorithms allows uh, when identity doesn't matter to simplify the trajectories and converge quicker towards uh, end positions. <coughs> and uh, from this, each Zoid is, um, uses a five-step five local control strategy to reach its goal. It first rotates towards its goal and aligns, then accelerates and cruises while correcting its orientation and as it gets closer to the goal, it slows down and finally um, stops within uh, a centimeter of the goal and orientates with the, the, the um, communicated orientation. We developed different types of applications to demonstrate the benefits of the it, such as uh, various drawing applications, the basic of that we saw earlier, or um, uh, more ubiquitous interfaces, but also information visualization applications. Nonetheless, um, Zoids have shown clear limitations. Uh, the optical tracking system relying on the projector restricts inherently the interaction area and makes the robot sensitive to ambient light. The lack of omnidirectional drive uh, imposes orientation phases provoking sometimes uh, unexpected Zoid movements and uh, disturbing uh, users. While the tracking resolution is fine enough, the positioning accuracy remain, uh, remains coarse, about a centimeter, mainly due to uh, the mechanical component. And finally, the scalability be, uh, being uh, a common problem in uh, tangible user interfaces. Here, the form factor and the cost of uh, Zoids uh, limits the, the amount, the number of Zoids that we can use in the, at the same time. And uh, naturally, as size decreases, power supply uh, quickly becomes a, um, a problematic and uh, um, either charging or direct power supply has to be uh, uh, miniature, sorry, batteries and power supply uh, uh, solutions have to be found. So from this, we see different, uh, d uh, different uh, directions to improve the it and help a further investigation of some user interfaces. Using the it, for example, in educational contexts, could allow us to create engaging platforms for children to help them discover complex and, complex and ab abstract concepts such as uh, physics and the uh, functioning, for example, of the solar system or mathematics and statistics. We also want to explore how Zoids could um, dynamic cha dynamically change shape, such as radius changing or shape morphing, to provide more diverse and expressive uh, physical uh, representations. Understanding how the unique physical variables provided by Zoids and Swarm user interfaces, such as movement, for example, can help Swarm user interfaces um, convey more and uh, more richer information. And, and uh, yeah, um, we also want to um, um, investigate how um, Zoids can, could evolve, uh, could work on vertical surfaces, and uh, to uh, create more ubiquitous displays. Uh, and transition from uh, horizontal to vertical uh, environments. And while we have uh, already done some investigation on how to actuate physical objects in the environment, we want to push further this inve investigation and appropriate passive objects for interaction and display. Finally, we want to explore how um, Zoid combining Zoids and assembling them together could allow us to um, design self-assembly 3D interfaces. So looking forward from this point on, uh, we think there will be a shift uh, from ubiquitous computing towards ubiquitous robotics. Just like computing has begun to become uh, invisible and pervasive in our everyday lives, uh, robotics will also become invisible. 
And after all, computers no longer look like, they, like this, so why should all robots look like this? So with, with this work, we mostly explored the device aspect of ubiquitous robotics, and, but we can also imagine how um, robot, robots could uh, ev move, move and, and uh, create body interfaces, as we will see in the following uh, presentation, actually, or uh, to larger scales, um, invade our furnitures and architectures. Ubiquitous robotics will uh, adapt to fit the physical demands of a changing world and changing inter interaction patterns. And on that, I would like to thank you, and I will now be happy to take your questions. We have time for a couple of questions. Raise your hand, please. Oh, Yoshi. Hi, I'm Yoshi Shi from MIT Media. It's very, very interesting work. I like uh, vision of uh, Swarm UI. Also, the, all the demonstration is very powerful. But also, I see a lot of a strong shadow of 2D GUI mm -hmm. because applying a bit of the physicality in 2.5, 1D, for example. Among applications, I like bulldozing that George Fitzmaurice demonstrated in the Bricks work in 1995. So my question is, seeing a really great, uh, excited, tangible departure, how to defy gravity, how to go z-axis would be the next important challenge. First thing is you may want to pile up like a building structure or even levitate. You actually should 100 drones in the Arcelor Electronica yeah. and also Xenon, for example. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to hear how to defy gravity to z-axis to heaven. Um, that's, that's definitely a, a direction we want to explore, although the, the drone um, uh, direction shows clearly problems in terms of like t uh, air turbulences and things like that uh, that are disturbing each other. So the thing that we quickly started to explore was to create um, modules, like uh, modules that we would put on top of robots with uh, ramps and, and platforms, which we could use just like in the uh, Wally movie, basically uh, have the robots uh, climb on top of each other and create 3D assemblies out of uh, 2D elements um, from the ground up, basically, and having them construct like Lego uh, structures on their own, basically. <laughs> how, to re how to represent in a 3D way may work, but how to interact may be very different, because mm -hmm. still we are depending on so much GUI metaphor, mm -hmm. but uh, for dealing with flying all the stuff, you have to depend, invent something new, special one. That mm -hmm. would be a good challenge. So to what extent your interaction design principle of 2.1D a uh, swarm interface can be applicable to beyond. It's a very interesting uh, research question. Mm -mm. So hope to see in next WIST or Kai or TI. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think with this uh, inspiring research question, we will move and thank the author. Thank you very much. Thank you.